What's up guys, welcome back. The best of videos have been getting a ton of awesome feedback. So today I'm gonna to bring you another one, one that's been requested over and over again, and that's looking at just the S&P 500 indexes and ETFs to crown which one is the best S&P 500 index for you to buy right now. But before we start guys, two seconds, I just wanna say this morning I hit 18,000 subscribers, which is insane to me considering that I just had 10,000 about a month ago. So thank you so much for everyone that's been subscribing, sharing the content. You know, I'm really happy to have all my new subscribers and my old subscribers as well, but just want to take a second and say thank you. I'm extremely grateful for everybody that watches the video, gives me feedback, helps me learn, the community's building. So I, like I said, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thanks so much guys for 18,000 subscribers this morning. It, it really made my day. So as always guys, I jumped on my YouTube channel, got on the community tab. I asked you guys for a vote. I picked a couple in the top and was not surprised at all to see out of almost 300 votes, 289 votes, 71% picked VOO. That did not surprise me at all. But the results after doing my research surprised, surprised the hell out of me. It's insane. People left in the comments some other things that I want to note real quick. So people gave feedback of why they voted and then some people threw in some other ones, okay? And like SPLG, I told people, if you had another favorite, throw it in. SPHD, I will be honest. Last week I did one on the high dividend, so I, I didn't put in this list VYM, SPHD, for example. And I also, I was really just looking for just the S&P 500. So I wasn't really thinking about the growth or the value ETFs as well, like VOOG or SPYG. You can see a couple votes for VYM. Guys, VYM is great. Like I said, those ETFs are awesome. I did a video on just uh, dividend ETFs that you could go back and check out. But really, this, this really helped me build the list beyond just the standard S&P 500 ETFs because there's really only about four of them. Let's take a look at the ones we got going on right now. And then also I've taken some of your feedback. Hopefully the charts are going to be a little bit more visually appealing than in the last couple of weeks as well. So let's shoot over and see what we got. So this turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought, but here's the list that I got. I got IVV, VOO, SPY, SPLG, VOOG, SPYG, IVW, and you see the growth in the value stocks as well for the same companies. And but the hardest part here was that there really aren't a lot of metrics to measure ETFs as far as index funds are concerned. And I think that goes to show how awesome index funds can be for beginners and people that are just learning about investments or people who frankly just don't want to put in the time to learn about them. I, first and foremost, I am an index fund investor. 90% of my investment portfolio is VTSAX. All of these ETFs have very similar mutual funds, right? But the difference between a mutual fund and an ETF, if you don't know, is that an ETF, it trades like a regular stock. So you can buy it inside your brokerage account. It's the same as a mutual fund, but like I said, it has a live share price. It can be traded inside your brokerage account. And it makes it a little bit easier for people that maybe don't have you know, a Roth IRA or don't have the $3,000 that's a minimum for purchasing VTSAX, things like that. So ETFs are, are, are awesome. And now that they are index funds as well, with ETFs, it's the best of both worlds. So just like with mutual funds, ETFs, guys, their expense ratio, that, that's super important. So I had to look at expense ratios. We want expense ratios to be low. I understand sometimes there has to be some sort of expense, especially for operating these funds, but we want them to be low. And with all of the different options out there, they really should be competing to get as low as possible. Once we get to a certain you know, expense ratio, it's probably better off that you read a book, watch a couple YouTube videos, and do some research on your own so that you can do the investment and you don't have to pay somebody because just like you know your growth and your dividends and stuff compound, fees compound as well. And something that looks small, like 0.1%, you know, over time, it could be a lot of freaking money. I look at the dividend yield because in the S&P 500, there are a ton of companies that pay a dividend. I want a piece of that, right? So the, we're not going to see the things like in VYM and these other dividend ETFs. We're not going to see them up in the fours and things like that. But, you know, it's, it's nice to get a little bit of something for our time. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see a little bit of a dividend. The inception year, I've talked about this in previous videos. Some people have argued with me that this does not matter. To me, I think there's something to be said for being established and going through different economic times and different scenarios and, and different bubbles. Like I said, I, I think that if you have a fund that's been operating for a really long time, to call yourself the best, I, I really, 
I think that's a metric that you really have to look at. I feel strongly about that. Assets under management is kind of like the same thing. How much are we actually managing inside this portfolio? The size of the assets under management is going to lower volatility and stuff like that. I like to see a nice high assets under management. I don't really want to see something small necessarily unless it's new. But like I said, that's something I look at. Number of holdings, most of these are just going to be the S&P 500. So there's going to be about 500 holdings. But as I said in previous videos, you know, the amount of holdings also is going to lower volatility and it's also going to negate the, the need for turnover inside that fund. The five-year CAGR, that's going to be with the dividends. Like how much is that dividend growing over time every single year? Because as prices go up, share prices go up, companies pay higher dividends. I want these index funds that are trying to match what these top 500 companies are doing, I want that to go up as well. And then also the return over the last year. Because like I said, some people like those dividends and like getting paid right now. Other people are looking for long-term growth and they are going to benefit later on when they take the money out of the market. So they want to see that. So we want to see a balance of all of these. Granted, there's going to be people that are, are great and they're going to be the top of their games, but we have to see when we measure them against other things. Now, before I scored these metrics, I want to show you exactly the numbers and something that kind of surprised me a little bit. Now, I'm going to rank each one of these, but I just want to talk about the value stocks, guys. When, when I actually put these down on paper, I didn't realize that like the value stocks for somebody like me... I know there might be people out there that these are gonna be good for, maybe, but like those are the people that might be looking to get into bonds, a little bit more stability. But for me right now at my age and what I wanna see, value stocks really aren't the way to go, especially when compared to the other things. So when I started scoring all these, I gotta be honest, I got rid of the value ETFs. I got rid of VOOV, SPYV, and IV. I just, I, I didn't think they deserved to be in the same table with this. And another thing that, that I actually learned in this video and another one that I got rid of, guys, I got rid of SPY. And the reason I got rid of SPY was when I learned about SPLG. Now, when I started first investing, SPLG was not an S&P 500 index fund. Let me show you what I mean. Before this year, so before 2020, SPLG was their portfolio large cap ETF. It was not a... S&P 500. They changed it this year now to track the S&P 500. They essentially competed with their own SPY. And the reason they did that is right down here because SPY is a unit investment trust. And this is not really a good thing for SPY. If I just read here from ETF Trends, it says the ETF is set up as a unit investment trust which puts it at a disadvantage to other S&P 500 funds. Managers cannot use index futures to manage cash, are restricted from immediately reinvesting dividends, and are unable to engage in security lending. That's not a good thing. So essentially, like if we look at past all of that, why did they add SPLG? Well, I think they did it because they realized that SPY is, tr is trash in comparison. Like we talked about, you know, when SPY would be good. And they talked about it in this, in this um, particular article as well. For long-term investors, we want to go SPLG because it has a much lower expense ratio. And we're going to look at all those in a second. SPY is great for people that run the wheel. The spy wheel is, you know, the big leagues, you know. But for short-term investors that don't really care about all these disadvantages, okay, people might want to invest in SPY. But for the normal person that's looking for long-term index fund, most index fund investors are long-term people. Guys, SPY, it, in my opinion, is trash. If we compare those two, like I said, these two expense ratios are very, very different. If you don't know what this number means, what this expense ratio means is that for every $10,000 invested, you are gonna pay $3 yearly for this one and $9 yearly for this one. Now you're like, all right, three and nine on 10,000? Well, look at it in terms of it's three times more fees and it's gonna compound. That is a lot. Also, SPLG, higher dividend yield. It's a little bit newer. It has smaller management. It is growing. The number of holdings, pretty much identical. They are growing their dividends faster, and they have a slightly lower return. Not enough to really make it uh, that big of a deal. So if I had to say choose one or the other, I'm going to go with SPLG. So I'm not going to put them both in the ratings. I'm just going to get rid of SPY and say, unfortunately, I don't think it's the best 
S&P 500 index ETF. Simple as that. Now here's where I got blown away a little bit because I, I really thought one of the growth funds was going to just dominate, right? We hear growth and we're like, yes. But when you weigh it against other metrics, some things pop out. Now what I did here to make it a little bit easier on the eyes and easier for you to understand. So people said it was just a jumbled mess. I, I tried to like, you know, put some every other collar so you can see it. And also other confusion, people like that was the best. Why did you rank it with the highest number? I guess the highest number wins. So the best one I gave a six and then I went all the way down the line. These three each got six because they tied. And then I put the sixes all in green and the yellow. So you can see the second place in each metric in yellow. So the expense ratios, we see the growth ones tend to have a really high expense ratio with the exception of the SPYG. Now, a lot of these used to be 0.4. I assume SPYG is going to come back down and stay there, which will make, you know, SPYG a really, really enticing investment with those other ones that we see here. The dividend yields, the growth ones, like I said, they're growth. So we usually we have dividend or growth. So I expected the dividends to be lower. And as you can see, the one year returns are much higher. Vanguard, they started this game. You always assume they're going to be around the longest. And I got to give credit to Vanguard. They're a really freaking awesome company. You guys know I am a Vanguard fanboy, but you know, there's something to be said with being established, being first, laying the groundwork and letting others pretty much copycat Vanguard. Assets under management, IVV and VOO, guys up there with $200 billion of assets under management. That is absolutely insane. Like I said, the S&P 500s, they're right there at 500. These growth ones, they're just picking growth stocks. Like I said, if you want to know the difference between a growth stock and a value stock, just a quick Google. It doesn't even need to be a video. You can pretty much Google that really fast. Um, the five-year CAGR, we can see that IVV, they're raising their dividends. So not only do they have the highest dividend, but it's also growing at pretty much the greatest rate. The only thing that's growing faster is IVW, which is in the same company. So you can see this company, they're really into growing their dividends up uh, at least consistently over time in the last five year period. If you look at the one year return, now here's where the one year return and these S&P 500 indexes really come into play. The S&P 500, it goes up by a certain amount. So if I'm tracking that index, it should be very, very similar. Now I will say that as of recording this video, the one year return of the S&P 500 is identical to VOO. It is 6.41. So IVV actually returned less than the actual S&P 500 did, as well as SPLG. Now these returned much greater because technically their job is not to track the S&P 500. They just work inside the S&P 500 with those companies that are growth stocks. So that's why those are so much greater than these three right here. I haven't been putting share price in because with fractional shares now, you can pretty much buy anything, it doesn't really matter. But people made a good point. These things like dividend yields and also growth, they depend on the share price a little bit, right? Percentages are based on that. And we could see that the spider funds are much lower. All the other ones are pretty comparable up in the you know high 100s, low 200 range, except for IVV right now, which is you know valued at $320 as of today. Like I said, I don't know if that's expensive, it's cheap. Like I said, it's it's pretty much based at on the valuation of the S&P 500. So now what I did is I summed up all of the columns. The biggest number is gonna be the best, in my opinion, from the research that I did and the metrics that I used. Maybe you wanna get rid of one of these metrics and sum up something else. Maybe you wanna add a different metric. That's up to you. All you're doing is taking this as, you know, the foot in the door to go out and do your own research if this is something that you're interested in. Now I was surprised by two things. Really, with only six, it was hard to really make a big gap. I assumed that most of them were gonna be like right at the same level, like pretty much tied. But IVV pretty much cleaned up with 36. Them and VOO, they cleaned up even against the growth ones. And I, I really thought the growth ones were gonna be higher. I was really, really surprised. And that's why I'm glad I do stuff like this because it really opens my eyes. Now, should you own maybe more of these or one of these? To be honest, this is one of those rare cases in other videos, you know, with other ETFs, I said, you know, maybe you wanna own a couple of these. It doesn't have to be just one. This is a case where you really don't need two S&P 500 indexes. They're essentially doing the same exact thing. So you're pretty much crossing over and overlapping your investments. So this is one of those videos where you might only wanna choose one. With that said, there's pretty much three S&P 500s 
and there's three growth. So maybe if you wanted an S&P 500 growth, you might choose one of these, or if you just wanted the S&P 500, you might want one of these. So here's my real takeaways with this, guys. And as a VTSAX guy, I always tell people VOO. I, I really do. But now looking at this, I might give, you know, a little bit more recommendation to IVV. And they're pretty much the same, right? SPLG, I'm still not ready. SPY and SPLG, I'm not really ready to recommend them over IVV and VOO as far as just an S&P 500 index ETF. IVV came out on top here, but I think if you had VOO and you're stacked in there, I don't think you need to take all of it and move it to IVV. I, I really don't. But if you want a growth, I'd probably go with SPYG only because I personally, I hate fees. I, there's so much free information out there that you can do. I hate fees. As far as index funds, mutual funds, if it goes over like 0.06, I'm not even going to look at it. That's just me personally. I... Just like when I read resumes, if there's not three years of experience, they go side. Like it's the same as the, you, I don't know. I just, VOOG, I, I, even 0.1, I would never even go through it. If I wanted growth, I'm just going to invest in Microsoft and Apple. I'm going to split my investing between Microsoft and Apple and I'm going to let it run because those, that will do the same thing and maybe it won't return the best, but probably will do just as good as any of these growth ETFs. But if you don't want something like the total stock market, you know, IVV right there, the, the iShares Core S&P 500, winner, winner, chicken dinner, take it home. Guys, feedback down below. I'm gonna do more of these in the future. Let me know which ones you want me to do. Metrics I should add, metrics I should take away. Anything to make the chart a little bit more appealing so that you guys can enjoy more videos in the future. Here's a playlist of all the other best of videos I've done over the last couple of weeks. And here's a look at the 2020 dividend portfolio. If you wanna see the moves that I'm making, I update that portfolio on Thursdays. And until I see you on the next one, stay positive, work really, really hard always. Please be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day and an even better tomorrow.